Uh, look, moving on to the other big thing today, announcement uh, and a oh, classic announcement. Stuff had it uh, in the paper yesterday morning, so it came as no surprise and the government had pushed it out there and flown the flag. And that is that they're going to continue with the 50% public transport subsidy, the road user charges uh, reductions, which means I'll go out and get some more or go online and get some more today. Um, and I guess it's a reduction in petrol tax. I was going to say the tax subsidy. It's not a tax subsidy. They're just not charging what they used to for tax on petrol. Now, that is going to help a lot of people um, who are going to be doing it tough or tougher in, in the next six or seven months. It also, and I'm trying to assess what impact it has on the people who use our roads most, and those are the people who run firms that haul things around and use our roads or goods or people around their roads. Um, they are represented by a lobby group called Transport New Zealand and the boss of that is Nick Leggett and he joins us now. Uh, Nick, welcome uh, to the platform. Nice to talk to you again. Hi, Sean. How are you? Very well, thank you. What do you make of this? I mean, uh, firstly, it's just odd. Grant Robertson said we're going to stop it here and now and then suddenly they find some more money uh, for it. it. It kind of feels like it's election year and it might be a bit of a bribe. Does this have an impact on your members? Does this make things better for them? Yeah, a massive impact, actually. Um, and, you know, truck, trucks are on the road most of the day and quite a lot of the night, and they pay road user charges uh, as diesel-powered vehicles, and even if you've got a ute that's diesel or a car that's diesel, you yep. pay the same road user charges, but trucks, of course, pay it on weight because it is a, a consumption charge yep. for the use of, of the road. Mm. And uh, what the government are doing here is choosing to uh, not charge a proportion of that, quite a high proportion, actually, 36%. Yep. Um, and, um, you know, to give your listeners an idea, I mean, a, a sort of a 45, 50-tonne truck uh, if it's travelling 100,000 kilometres a year, so that might be, you know, it might be going Auckland mm. to Wellington. Yeah. Um, that that would usually pay about $55,000 a year for that number of kilometres uh, in road user charges. And this would give it a discount of a bit over 20000 Well, it does Whoa. give it a discount of a bit over $20,000. So we are talking, you know, quite substantial amounts of money for mm. the trucking industry. And... It's not going, um, you know, it, it is a, it's, a, it's a, a worthwhile subsidy, if you like, because it's a very low margin industry and it obviously gets squeezed when times are tough. And yeah. it's really important that with a, an economy in the state that ours is in, in terms of very high inflation, uh, heading potentially towards a, a recession, that we've got the kind of... Um, the kind of things that are going to keep us productive. And, of course, the trucking industry is a bit of a semiconductor for productivity. Mm. It, it keeps things moving around. And when it's not efficient and it's not able to function properly, we get you know, we, we get significant economic consequences. So the, the thing we need to do is, if you listen to economists, and I do a fair amount, as I'm yeah. sure you do, um, you know, the, the best thing we can do is grow our way out of this. And mm. so I, I sort of see this, uh, the industry is not, stupid and it doesn't have its handout for welfare it's saying though until inflation drops a bit more you know drops say to below six percent we think the subsidy should stay in place yeah. and if and the I'm, subsidy I'm really doesn't didn't because the margins are so low at the moment the economy's tight you your members would have to pass that price increase straight on uh straight on and that would end up on the as increased prices in the supermarket shelves, which are already high, right? That's and, right. and for That's right. building I mean, products and anything you everything. want to move anywhere. Yeah. Sure, okay. 93, 93% of New Zealand's freight is transported on the back of a truck. Um, and I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist, because I'm certainly not, to know that if you increase the cost of that transport, everything that the truck carries goes up in price. So this is a, is a good insulator. Um, it's also, um, uh, it's, it's, it, would be, it would have been inflationary for the government to put all these costs yeah. back on yesterday. Mm. Um, so whether it's the public transport subsidy or the fuel excise, and I'm really pleased you made that distinction because everybody has been talking about the fuel excise, you know, being a, 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 um, a subsidy. some kind of hand, yeah, subsidy. Yeah. It's not. It's 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 a, it's a choice that this government made to tax fuel at a higher rate, and they've made the choice to 
to keep it off. And I think that's a good choice in the circumstances. This is the most direct thing the government can do, I think, to subsidise people immediately, whether it's public transport, fuel or, de- uh, or road user charges. And, um, you know, that's, that's what you'd expect governments, that's what they're there to do. Yeah. And, you know, what's changed since Grant Robertson said that last year? Well, the Prime Minister's changed. And we've got a Prime Minister, I think, who's um, uh, quite in tune with uh, people's needs on the ground. So you're saying this is a bread and butter issue. And I guess the way you've explained it to us in the last couple of minutes, it is a bread and butter issue, isn't it? Absolutely. It literally, is. it's about this the is, price of bread is. and about the price of butter because it's, they're it's impacted. Literally. Yeah, impacted by, by trucking charges. All right. Jeez, uh, oh, it's amazing that, that just a change of Prime Minister can change an attitude that quickly. Well, I, I think we've seen this is the first, I suspect, of a few things. Uh, well, I hope it's the first of a few things yeah. where there is going to be some change. And uh, like I, I kind of felt that under the previous leadership, um, things were drifting towards the rocks a bit, and the captain and the the the, 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 the first officer weren't really, you know, they, there was nothing they could do to turn the ship around. And so I think we've got a new captain who's got the engine, you know, on full and, you know, yeah. steering away from the rocks. Many would argue they've already hit the iceberg and it's just, you know, <laughs> changing, yeah, oh, yeah, changing what, what the band's playing on the deck of the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, Nick, we, we, we won't know until <laughs> for a few months. <laughs> yeah, until it's sunk. Um, Nick, uh, did you guys uh, lobby for this, for the extension or not? And when did you know that they were seriously considering this? Oh, look, yes, we've spent months, actually. You know, this this, this stuff seems like it's all done in a heartbeat. But, look, yep. we, we were talking to Michael Wood as the Minister of Transport um, in October last year. Actually, earlier than that, we were writing to him and then we met him um, uh, at the end of last year in December and put the case, we've continued to put the case publicly because we've recognised that um, it's important, you know, people don't think too much about the way freight moves around, but it's important to point that out to the public. And um, we ran a quite a good online campaign getting, you know, people support uh, for the for the total package. So, yeah, we've, we've spent months doing this and, Actually, we didn't know, and you know, we, we knew before the announcement yesterday, but not too far ahead because yeah. I, I suspect this is a new prime minister coming and in new, and, and a new um, attitude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, while we've got you here too, look, a, a terrible week for Aucklanders, um, and, and terrible stories emerging about the damage to homes. Apparently, there's going to be a surge in the price of cars because. You know, hundreds of cars uh, caught up in the floodwaters are, are, are going to be written off and, and there'll be a surge in demand. The other thing, though, is an awful lot of freight comes through the port of Auckland and has to get out to the rest of the country via um, the Auckland Urban uh, Roading Network. What impact has it had on on your members who are involved in that part of our transportation infrastructure? Um, and do you think Auckland could have been more resilient to a downpour like that? Roading wise, well, the the the, op- the transport operators that I've spoken to um, have said they were very impressed by how quickly those major arterial and freight routes were brought back online. Uh, and of course, it, it is other than getting people to hospital and getting emergency crews to places, freight is probably the next um, the next cab off the rank. So. Uh, you know, Auckland is congested on a good day. You know, the cost of that to the economy is well over a billion dollars a year. Um, but we've been impressed by how quickly uh, this, you know, things have got back online. And, I, you know, I, I think that's a, a, a bouquet to uh, Auckland Transport and Waka Kotahi. And you don't hear bouquets very often thrown to uh, those parties. But I, I no. think that it's, it's pretty good. I mean, the, the concern more was that connection to Auckland, uh, to Northland. Um, you know, it's a tenuous uh, roading network up to Northland and within Northland, and there does need to be more attention uh, paid to uh, the State Highway 1 and, and some of those minor State Highways there and, of course, some of the, the, the infrastructure. But I do, I do think it's a chance as Auckland rebuilds to reconsider how they do it. Uh, in certain areas, and part of that's around the sort of the underground infrastructure, and and, and obviously where they build again. But um, you know there are there, there is there are opportunities I think to do freight movement better within Auckland, utilising 
specific freight lanes, uh, congestion charging, and items like that that you know could 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 aid uh, the movement of freight, which, as I say, aids productivity and the general economy. And um, we've got to think as we try and come out of this post-COVID time, ways that we can do that that mm. really aid economic growth. Yeah. I'm wondering, that you know, the extension of these, well, subsidies, uh, tax relief, whatever we want to call it, uh, how long have they set down to last for? What's 30th of June, um, and I guess I'm sceptical that they'd be pulled that close yeah. to an election. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to come to. That was the purpose of me asking that. Why doesn't... Yeah. Why doesn't the government just remove any doubt on those? And maybe there'll be a budget announcement about it, Nick. Why don't they just say, look, um, rest of the year, you've got this. So you've got some certainty. You don't have to mess around lobbying them. Um, and I don't know, maybe provide some confidence and people say I can plan a little bit better for the next quarter or the next couple of quarters knowing that that policy is going to remain in place. That would seem a sensible thing to do. Well, I think from a, from a political perspective... Mm. A re-announcement of a further uh, extension. Oh, they, get an oh, they get extension. another bite at the cherry, don't they? Exactly, but but also I think it's responsible governance for them to actually do a, a check, a temperature check, both of you know what's happening in the economy, what's happening in people's lives, and actually is something like this affordable to keep going. So I think there are. It's an important check to to have these these fairly short. Uh, run periods, um, but you know the political reality is, of course. Um, I mean, if you if you're the government and you you're going to put you know going to keep extra money in people's pockets, you, you do want to announce that quite close to an election, don't you? Yeah. Uh, so, Nick, uh, what I am getting from you, and you're one of the few people, one of the few sectors uh, at the moment, we've got a number of sectors saying, and, and we just heard from Kirk Hope saying, well, you know, proof of the pudding for if Hipkins has changed is whether he will or not change anything and, or just talks a good game. You're saying this is a, in your sector, a demonstrable indication that a change of leadership has changed policy or, pro, or approach by the government. Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Nick, I thank you as always uh, for your time, mate. Um, we will talk again soon. That is Nick Leggett, um, the Il Supremo, Il Supremo of Transport New Zealand and those subsidies... Back on till June, um, and I think he makes a very good point, Nick Leggett. They could just say, oh, look, we're going to leave them on for the rest of the year. Then they miss an opportunity to tell you how generous they're being with your money uh, and what they've given you that you paid for. <laughs> and actually, it's a very good point. Nick's done a bit of politics. Of course, he used to be the mayor of Porirua, so he knows what he is talking about.